Hey guys, this is Anara here. Welcome to section 3.3, the inverse of a quadratic function. So here's a list of things that we're going to be going over in this video. Um, it may not seem like a lot, but today's um, video is very concentrated on the examples. So just really quickly, here's a list of things that you do need to know before we get into the examples. So the first thing is the equation of the inverse of a quadratic function can be found by interchanging the x and y in vertex form and solving for y. So the key thing here is that it always has to be in vertex form and we'll see that in one of the examples. In the equation of the inverse of a quadratic function, the positive square root represents the upper half and negative square root represents the bottom half. So um, in the example, when um, I sketch the graph, I drew them in two different colors just to highlight that one of them was the upper half of the square root, um, the positive half, and the negative half was in a different color. And you'll see that in the example. The inverse of a quadratic function can be a function if the domain is restricted. So uh, most of the time, if the, so if the domain is not restricted um, on the inverse of a quadratic function, then um, this is not actually a function, but if it is restricted, it can sometimes be a function and pass the vertical line test. So in this example over here, we have to determine the inverse of a function and its domain and range. So here's a function f of x is equal to 2, x minus 8 squared plus 5. The first thing we're going to do is replace the f of x with y. y is equal to 2, x minus 8 squared plus 5. Now we need to switch the x for y and the y for x. So now x is equal to 2, y minus 8 squared plus 5. So our goal now is to isolate for the new y. So now with some simple algebra, x minus 5 is equal to 2, y minus 8 squared. So we're going to divide um, the left side and the right side by 2 to get x minus 5 divided by 2 is equal to y minus 8 squared. So now we're going to square root both sides um, to give us plus or minus root x minus 5 divided by 2 is equal to y minus 8. So we add 8 to both sides. And finally, we get y is equal to plus or minus square root x minus 5 divided by 2. So that is the inverse of the function, and um, the inverse is not actually a function. So through the graph, we can see that the original function, this quadratic function to the left, was a function, but the inverse is no longer a function. And like I said earlier, the top half is represented by um, the positive square root of the function, and the negative half is represented um, in the bottom of this graph. So yeah, it's not a function. If we put the two graphs together, it's very evident that um, this is a reflection on the y equals x line, and the original function, again, is the quadratic, the red one. And um, because it's a reflection, um, it does not pass, and the domain is not restricted, it does not pass the vertical line test, making the inverse not a function. So this example over here is um, one of the tricky ones. We have to determine the inverse of the function f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 3x plus 1. So the first thing we need to do is complete the square because we need to get it into vertex form before we can actually determine the inverse of the function. So I'm assuming that you guys already know how to complete the square and if you don't, please review it in the completing the square video. Um, I'm just going to go over it really quickly. So we take the original function, divide the first two terms by the coefficient, negative 2, to isolate um, the x squared and get it on its own. And then we take the middle term, negative 3 over 2, divide it by 2 and square it. Um, we add the square brackets. Um, and the reason why we do that is because we need to subtract the 9 over 16 on the outside, but keep it within the square brackets. And now we have a perfect square um, through x squared minus 3 over 2x plus 9 over 16. Um, or sorry, minus plus 9 over 16, and that will give us x minus 3 over 4 squared. So if you expand that out, you should get that term in the middle. Um, so that's what we have in the next step over here. But then in the pink, 
um, it shows that we need to multiply the negative 2 by uh, negative 9 over 16 because we're trying to take that outside with the 1. So we add that 9 over 8 because negative 2 multiplied by negative 9 over 16 is 9 over 8. So we're going to take that outside of the bracket and then we add those up to get 17 over 8. And finally, we have our function in vertex form, negative 2 x minus 3 over 4 squared plus 17 over 8. So now with that, we can determine the inverse of the function. Here is the function in vertex form because that's what we're actually going to be working with. And the first step is to replace the f of x with y, switch the x and y coordinates, or switch the x and y variables rather, and now we're going to just do some algebra to isolate for y. So x minus 17 over 8 is equal to negative 2 y minus 3 over 4 squared. Divide both sides by negative 2. And then we're going to square root both sides to get plus or minus root x minus 17 over 8 divided by negative 2 is equal to y minus 3 over 4. So now we're going to add 3 over 4 to both sides to finally get plus or minus square root x minus 17 over 8 divided by negative 2 plus 3 over 4 is equal to y, and that is the inverse of the function. So the graphs over here show the original function and the inverse of the function. So this is what the, the original function looks like, and this is what the inverse of the function looks like. And again, we have the top half and um, the negative half of the square root that's represented in two different colors um, on the inverse of the function. And lastly, if we put them together, we can see that the inverse is just a reflection on the y equals x line. So really quickly, here's a summary of everything that we went over in this video. The inverse of a function undoes what the original function does. The inverse of a quadratic function is not a function unless the domain is restricted. And the inverse of a function is a parabolic relation either to the left or the right of the quadratic. And we saw these um, relations in the, the, two, the last two examples. So if a is greater than 0, it's um, to the right. And if a is less than 0, it's to the left. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was super helpful and that you guys will keep watching the rest of the videos.